In this video, we're going to learn about JSON inference in ClickHouse 23.9. We'll get some help from a data set of downloads from the PyPI package index. So I'm just going to use the curl command to get one of the files in that data set, and then we'll unzip it and we'll run it through the JQ command. And we can see here what fields we've got. So you can see we've got a timestamp, we've got a country code, we've got a project, we've got some nested things like the file, details and if we scroll down a little bit more we can see the python implementation that was used as well as the system and if we keep on going down there are loads and loads of entries in this file we're first going to see what happens if we try to process this file using clickhouse 23.8 so we'll just launch an instance of clickhouse local using 23.8 docker image and then what we're going to do next is we're going to set that url as a parameter called url at the top and now we're going to describe the table function S3 with that URL, and we'll tell it to give us the result in the TSV format. Now, if we give that a few seconds to run, it eventually gives us back an error, uh, which suggests that actually it's not going to be able to process it and that we should define the schema manually. That all sounds like a bit too much hard work to me. So let's have a look how we get on with 23.9. So we're going to come over to another tab and we'll launch ClickHouse Local there as well, uh, passing in the minus m flags, we get multi-line queries. Now you notice when I ran it, it said that it had loaded my config files. I just want to quickly point out one config setting that I've got in here, if you want to play along at home. And it's this one down at the bottom called schema inference cache max elements for S3. So we've got, we've got that set to zero and that will stop it from caching any schemas that we infer in this session. So let's go back now to that first tab and we're going to copy the data set URL from the top and we'll paste it over into our 23.9 session. Now we're going to describe the table S3 with the URL again, and this time we get back the schema. So you can see it's got the timestamp, the country code, it's got some nested ones as well. So the file is nested, and then we've got other ones inside there as well. One thing that's kind of annoying is that everything is nullable, and that's because it doesn't know whether there are going to be null values in here. But what we can do is we can, so let's run that again, and we're going to configure the schema inference make columns nullable, and we'll turn that off. And so what it will do is it, if it doesn't find any nulls in the sample of the values that it has to look at, then it's just going to say, okay, well, this column is not null. And if we now run that, uh, we can see we get back a much better schema. The next thing we're going to do is create a table. So we're going to create the table PyPI. We'll set the engine at the sorting key, and then we'll just tell it, hey, I want you to select from that S3 URL and with the with that setting uh, configured. And then once it's done that, we can then go and have a look at and, and query the, the data from the PyPI folder. We'll get the project at the file version, the name of the distro, and we'll just count all that together. And you can see we get back, it's the same, same project uh, every time. So we've only looked at one of the files. If we would look at all of them, uh, we'd probably see a more interesting answer. Uh, but I think this is a pretty cool feature. And if you like this, you might also like this video up here, which shows how to query and ingest Parquet files.